Rob and Slim Show. Hello. Hey, Wendy Starling, how are you? Good, how are you? We're doing good, we're doing good. We're on our sixth season finale, Wendy. God damn. <laughs> it's been a long, long ride, and, and we don't have much to show. It is is a hard uh, grind in, in anything creative, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's yeah. I, well, I listened to your guys' show the other day. I was like listening to it, and I'm, so now I'm I'm like more excited. I'm oh, that's oh, wow. awesome! That's a, that's you... such a compliment. Always when people say they listen, I'm a little worried. I'm like, oh, what did you not like? But everyone always has that kind of a response. I feel like they they usually enjoy it. But I loved you. Yeah, I loved your gear. I love your comedy. I loved. Uh, we saw uh, Funny Pains, and we had Georgie on last week, who directed it, and I fell in love with you from that documentary. Thank you. No problem. You. It's like you, I feel, are just like one of those like unfound treasures out there. Well, yeah. I'm just, I literally, so I'm like, so thank you for that. I just got done having like a screaming fight with the person that I'm dating like long distance during this pandemic. Oh. <laughs> like, we're, well, yeah, so I'm like, he might disagree as like a treasure. Um, yeah. I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> we're not having him on the show. Don't worry. We're not going to get his take on uh, on the on the Wendy, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> where is he located? He is in London. He is. Ooh. Ch- uh, it's fucking wild. <laughs> it's, I mean, I feel like a, a cage, you because know, I'm in New York. Yeah. And I'm in this little studio apartment. And so I'm just like trapped, like a caged animal. It's gotta I haven't be. been able to go anywhere, no shows. I'm losing, like the bipolar stuff is very real. And so I'm losing my fucking mind. I was going to ask if that comes like, out more in, in quarantine and all oh it does well the problem is like and i've been trying to, again i'm trying to like make jokes about it because that's my but everything now is in my apartment so it's it really it reminds me of when i was like a teenager and i first started having manic um episodes where i would just stay up all night and dress up and talk in my mirror and make videos and as a child i thought it was normal and then later people told me like oh no that's not mentally healthy like that's not good for you that's a warning sign that you're having a psychotic break wow then during quarantine yeah yeah so with comedy i was like why well, don't know people are just make videos and just talk to yourself i'm like yeah it's fucking triggering the last time i behaved like this for more than four days i was hospitalized oh. so it's really like yeah, so quarantine fucked me up a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I love but, hearing you talk about that. Uh, I know my mom had to come in and, and talk to uh, in like elementary school because I paced too much and I laughed too much. I laughed at things that just weren't laughable. I feel like, and yeah, I had to see like a school shrink for I don't know a couple days or so because yeah, that happened. What did they say? Did they give you Ritalin or something? How old are you? No, now I'm now I'm uh, forty three years young, and they, and they never gave me anything. I just deal with it, walk it off, dummy. Yeah, I'm 38, and I just missed the cusp. Yet my my younger brother, he's a year and a half younger. That's when they started like treating. That's when they started anything you had. They were just like, "Oh, your kid can't sit still. Have some meth." And you're like, "That seems to be <laughs> no, no. It'll be fine. It'll be fine." <laughs> Trust me. Here's Adderall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's meth, but it's but it's not real. It's like meth for kids. It's meth so junior, it's meth, but it's in a chewable. <laughs> junior. Right, it's a chewable. It's in the shape of a dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. So it's everything's like, better in dinosaur form. <laughs> Except dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the thing is, if you give a kid meth when they're in elementary school, it sounds gnarly, but usually they transition and they're doing heroin by the time they're 17. So it's going to balance itself out. <laughs> yeah. I feel like. I, yeah. I know from per- watching my brother in and out of jail. He oh. has a face tattoo. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. God damn. Yeah, I can talk about his drug addiction because it's not like I would, I mean, he's been... He, he for I thought it was a fake face tattoo, and he came to New York with his girlfriend earlier or like last year, and before the lockdown. And I was like, "Is that a real tattoo?" And he goes, "Yeah, it's pretty fucking sick." And I'm like, "You look like a fucking because he's like a tall, pretty white boy." So he's trying is to he like? Hard. I'm like, "You look." <laughs> yeah. Is your brother Machine Gun Kelly? He, that's who he looks like. It looks like a wannabe. It's fucking so. When I people like, don't do you want us to bleed? I've done other where I talk about my brother. I'm like, should we bleed about the stuff about him doing drugs? I'm like, no. He people are people don't think he like works at a church. He has a fucking upside down cross on his eye. Like so, he we can say that he's done drugs. I, don't think that's him. I feel like yeah. Anybody with that has definitely done drugs. Definitely done drugs. Yeah, that's the way to know. That's the way to know. <laughs> 
when uh when <laughs> up there like i i think i just saw that new york lifted the quarant uh the the um not the quarantine but the uh the curfew is that correct yeah it was so we had curfew uh for a week and they oh and they also it's like i don't even know what the fuck is going it's so here's the thing so the doc comes out and we're like this will be great I was like, this will be good because it's during quarantine, so people will be. And I was starting to work out jokes about that are quarantine specific because a lot of comics they became comics because they're like, I love writing puns and I'm clever and I'm gonna. That was all their their mission in life. But as you see in the documentary, that's not. I did it on accident when yes. I was. I'm 38 now. I was like 27. <laughs> so. I talk, my, the reason I do stand up is it's a way for me to communicate at people. And I found like, oh, this is an effective way for me to say a lot of really shitty, cunty things and talk about horrific shit, <laughs> which is like what I like to talk about. But if you do it with a smile and make it have a punchline, then, you know, people will listen to you talk about wild shit and get on board with it. <laughs> um, and so there's like always a way, and they didn't really, what's interesting. There are some jokes, I'm putting some more material online as I'm getting feedback from the doc, because um, I don't know if this is going to be like shocking to anyone. A bipolar person had a movie about them come out while they were in lockdown on a quarantine. So uh, this seems all surreal to me. So I'm just like, this. I feel like I'm in the Matrix and I'm just like frozen half of the time. <laughs> um but I like, but I'm putting more material online. I mean, I was, the way I survived in New York, and this started right when the documentary stopped following me, I signed up for a sugar daddy website. And I was like, I mean, uh, that's how I survived for three oh, years. Like doing addicts. sex work. Oh, okay. Yes. No, and, that is, that is valid yeah. as fuck. Yeah. And I have jokes about, well, that's the thing is like, what? I mean, I would open, well, before quarantine hit, I had a joke, my opening punchline to a joke was talking about being fucked by my sugar daddy super hard. So like so hard that I couldn't walk <laughs> and an opening line at a club and the punchline, I was talking about like getting where you just, my pussy was just so beat up, beat up, beat up. <laughs> and the punchline I was, I, I would reference like, you know, when a boxer gets punched over and over and their ear swells up. Yeah. <laughs> I have that happening down here. And the first punchline in the first 60 seconds of being on stage, I, the punchline I would throw out was cauliflower pun. <laughs> and like, it's pretty. So that's why I listened to you guys. And I was like, oh, these are my people. I can just talk oh. freely. Yeah. That's what, that's what I appreciate, appreciate about you is the realness of, of everything that, that you spit out there. Yeah. But it's like, you can... So you can make anything funny. If yes. you just the big thing is like, don't be apologetic, don't back down, be yourself. And I found a way to talk about wild shit, like essentially legal prostitution, yeah. and drug addiction, and people like married couples out on a date night could get them to laugh at it. <laughs> which is, I love. Too. I mean, it's yeah. I love seeing you talk about just. I, I forget how far into the uh, set you realized it, but. Every everybody in the crowd was like from out of the country, and you realized they weren't going to get any references. They weren't going to get any of your regular stuff. So you just tried all new stuff. I really thought that was yeah. cool. The, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what's interesting about that is like uh, so the joke that that um, they that I do they have in there. So it's a joke that I mean it still is fine. I'm working on a thing where I'm essentially because I'm like oh because the docs. Oh, there's not a lot of my material in there, which I really appreciate. So there's a perfect balance of people are interested, but it didn't burn any of my jokes. Okay. That's so cool. I, you know, because, right? Because, like, and you guys have heard this analogy. With a song, people will be like, oh, I love the song. I can listen to it over and over again. A joke you hear once, and the reason it's so funny is because you're like, oh, I didn't think that was fucking common. And then you've heard it once, and so you're like, once you hear a comic do the same joke three or four times, you're like, oh, this didn't just happen yesterday, you lying piece of shit fuck you, like, fuck this, and you realize it's all kind of a magic trick um, that we're doing. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but that is, I do, I have jokes, and that works with a crowd, whether it's an international crowd, where they're not, where, the, where if English is the second language to a room of 12 people scattered far away from each other, um, First of all, if English is the first language to remove 12 people scattered far away, you're already kind of fucked because mm. comedy works with people are close together. Laughter is mm. contagious. Yes. Um, which is why it will be interesting to see what it's like with a show where you have people sitting, you know, six, eight feet apart from each other because that 
was like, normally when you walk in, if you see people sat like that, you're like, fuck shit, god damn it. Like, it's just not <laughs> ideal. No, you um, know it's and all. all. Yeah. And they're all wearing a mask, too. It's like, you may as well fucking not understand English, because <laughs> I, I can't see how you're responding. <laughs> so is that what I, it's going to be, I though? Mean, that's what it's going to be, they're yeah. Gonna, they're going to reopen the comedy clubs, and that's how it's going to be With set up? six just... people and masks, like, far apart. Yeah, because they're going to have to wear a mask, and they'll probably have gloves on. I mean, it's just like, I don't know if I'm going to start. It'll look like I'm performing to a bunch of, like, back alley abortionists. Like, that's what I feel like. It was like a bunch of dudes, like, people in masks, can't see their faces. Like, just everyone's got, like, rubber gloves on. They're all sitting far apart. Like, don't leave any evidence. So, I mean... It could go either way. Like, I could either get, like, super afraid and not be able to do jokes. Yeah. Or just, like, get so fucking horny that I'm like, I am going to just, I have 15 minutes. I'm going to spend that time masturbating on each and every one of them. <laughs> just finger blast <laughs> yourself on stage. <laughs> yeah. I, dude, American Psycho is one of my favorite movies. So I try to be like, this is dystopian. But I'm walking around Manhattan. You see dudes in business suits with fucking gloves and masks. And I'm like, I... I'm, I'm like, I'll suck your dick. I'll, I'll, I'll wear a dental dam while I do it. I have to, it's too much. I wonder, how does that it's work like, in the mask with wearing the mask? You got to get, get a hole? How does it work? Dental dam, I feel like, would be the way. Yeah, I guess, and you'd have to suck a dick with a condom, which is like, first of all, any prostitute that tells you they do that is lying. Uh, or they're being serious and what a nerd. Um, <laughs> what a nerd? <laughs> Just, yeah, no, you're not the real What girl. a fucking loser <laughs> at this point. Oh, yeah, everyone's so afraid of COVID that you're like, I feel like. I guess you don't breathe out of your dick, right? It's like going yeah, no. There. It's, there's no blowhole. I feel like people are more afraid of COVID now than like AIDS. Like, that's what I feel like we've gotten to. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, just the way that people like put your mask on. It's like I put on more protection to go for a jog than I ever have to have sex in my life. I I spend more time like giving a shit than I ever have for like you know it's like yeah even less prep time than for anal. Like even with anal sex, you there's a lot of prep, but even that is like yeah a shower like a longer shower. <laughs> How did you connect, Wendy, with uh? With all the other comedians in the dock, was that you or was that uh, like a producer that that got them all on board? Like Jim Norton, Christina Hutchin Hutchinson, and Nikki Glaser. Well, so Christina is one of my best friends, and I met her when I first moved to New York. So I was in L.A. doing comedy there, and I was working out the the rape joke. I was working that bit out, and. It was one of those things where I was like, I don't know if this will work, but it was cathartic. And so I just talked about it. It was when the, uh, it was before Me Too. It was, I think, like, hashtag yes, all women or some bullshit, like, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and so I talked about it at an open mic that my friend ran out of their driveway in L.A. And I remember being like, I think there's something here. I may as well, what else do I, am I going to do? Try it. So I was working on that joke, and I was make it was starting to really work. And I was finding all the little bits to it to like the, a tight seven, like the core of it. But now it's become like, it's more of a, it's like a, a 20 minute story, but like with punchlines in it and to kind of, but I was working on the core bit. Yeah. And some New York, Blair Saki, who's a, was, she was uh, in New York at the time, was visiting. And she and a couple other comics who were New York comics visiting LA saw me on shows doing that bit. And they were like, holy fucking Christ. When you're in New York, please text me and do my show, which was good. That was like a good metric. And yeah. I'd already planned to move. So okay. they're like, if you're ever in New York and I was like, well, I'd, I have like selling my car in a week and I'll be there in two. And they were like, great. And Blair hooked me up with Christina to do guys. We fuck. Yes. I saw so that you did that. I got very lucky. I got uh. really lucky getting to New York and having met a couple of comics like John early. It's really big over here. So I was like, when I came over, people were vouching for me. So my whole thing when I got here was like, okay, you're getting opportunities to get on really good shows. Just don't fuck up. Just do not fuck this up. Yeah. Um, and then, so I met Christina doing her podcast and then we started doing Glamour Puss, the live show that's featured in the documentary. Um, so that's why she's in it. And then with the other comics, those are all just friends of ours. And like, I'm really good friends with Jim Yam and Nika I'm good friends with. Oh my God, I fell in love like, with her. I, I never knew her before the doc. Her and Moran, they were just so amazing. Like, yeah. I want to see their acts. Like, I already knew Rich Voss. I already knew Bonnie. I already knew little Jimmy. But I never knew yeah. you or those other two. And I'm like, oh my God, now I want to see their acts. Like, 
Dude, Mehran Kagani, first of all, yeah, I think those are two of the funniest people working today, and they, I, they, I don't know why they're not super fucking famous. Yamanika, yes. Yama's one of, uh, Yamanika Saunders, full name for people that have not seen the documentary. Yama is one of the funniest fucking people conversation she murders every time yeah. she gets on stage she fucking murders and she has that so like, instinct i feel like she has that just comedy instinct like it almost like rodney dangerfield had like he, it just yep. came out no matter what no matter what yeah she's one of the best and then mayron also again he's somebody who just conversational he's so fucking funny yeah. and every time i we like open mouth kiss he's where everyone there's always a fucking story so that was cool to have them on so that people could see them but yeah that was we just um, cause New York, especially comics, I think more than any other group, maybe musicians, but comics tend to be really cool with each other, no matter where you are status wise, okay, because cool. you have to work wow. and bust your ass for so long without getting paid and yes. people treating you like shit and exploiting you and doing all kinds of wild shit that they know the successful comics know how difficult it is. And we all see each other around doing Good shows, doing bar shows, and with comedy, you're only as good as your last set. So even the best comic knows they can go on stage and bomb that night, and they're the same as some asshole at a bar show. So yeah. comics, we're all friends, so it was, we're literally just like sending out a couple of text messages. And everyone was like, yep, we'll do it, whatever. So that was really nice. <laughs> that's so that's so amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. And even just like you go, going back to what you said about making money, like Jimmy saying it took 10 years to, to make anything. Uh, headlining mm -hmm. and all, or opening or whatever. Like, was a, wow, holy shit! Like, that's that's a long uh, commitment that I don't think most people have in them. No, it's and that's like with right now what I'm going through, and and I know a lot of people are going through this too with the pandemic thing. Thank the timing for the documentary. At least for me, this is going to sound really selfish, but the good thing about it is I've been like just alone and really fucking like bummed out where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Should I just kill myself? But I have a cat now and I'm like, well, well, I gotta, you know, and then I, ever, I think about my cat and I'm like, well, that would be sad. The cat yeah. needs you. How, yeah. How, the how cat, would the cat feel? Yeah. <laughs> how would the cat eat? Uh, you, know. you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I feel sad and then in the morning he like starts stabbing my eye and then I'm like, oh, he'll be fine. He'll just eat my body. So, yeah. Um, he'll live off of your body would. for a couple they of weeks. They would, but they're like, so cute. Yeah. They're so cute, those cats. I don't care. I know you gotta find, but then, but all the messages I've been getting from people That's where it's I was like, wondering. It, but, you know, the tenacity you had to keep going, and I'm like, okay, so thank you for people. Said I'm getting lots of messages of people being like, I was gonna kill myself, but then I saw your documentary and I changed my mind, and so yeah, it's that's... cool. But then, but then also it's like, like this fucking train wreck hasn't killed herself. Well, then, what what reason do I have? So I'm like, um, so but it's giving me like something to kind of like be like oh that's right that's right you have I've a purpose been struggling for 10 years we yeah. can keep struggling for however much longer you yeah. know i don't even know like i said we're six years in and we only have like 500 subs on youtube it is it, it's a hard hard grind mm -hmm. yeah but it's like but it's like with you guys what you do it's you love but it's the same thing where like yes. first of all you guys love what you do you're yeah. good at it Thank and it's Thank something you. where would it be nice to have like a fuck ton of money, a fuck ton of fans and not be, it's like, yes. Also, it is nice. Even if it's only, even if only 10 people listen to my podcast and like, it's like, that's worth it though. Yeah. To have engagement with even just those 10 people to know you're making somebody's day a little bit better. And it sounds so fucking lame, but yeah. it's true. no, it's true though. I've talked to my bun buddy um, a few weeks ago. His name is uh base guy. And I said, you know, we were kind of fortunate where, you know, 20 years ago, it would only be the two lucky people that had, you know, major syndicated radio shows that would have their voice heard. We at least have our, our chance to have our voice heard by those 10 people. You know, I feel like we are right. lucky. Yeah, and that's, what, and that's really all you need. And I think in life, and that's, people are noticing that now, it's interesting, with all the, everything that's going on, like, everything that's going on, people are just, like, losing jobs and money. And so it's, like, a time of, you know, it's, like, you're like, okay, what do I need? How much do I need? You know what I mean? It's like, so you don't need a lot of everything. You don't need a lot of money. You don't need no. to have like a, a bunch of, you know, super fans. You don't need a yacht. I mean, honestly, you need like a couple good friends and then a dependable cocaine dealer. Yeah. And then that's all I think. That's like all you need. Yeah. <laughs> you and, 
<laughs> and I'll message you off the show for for some connections, Wendy. I feel like I've never yeah. been more I've never been more appreciative to have a stupid retail job in my life because we're we're now necessary. Everyone else is yeah. out of work. Yeah. Wall Street's out of work, but but I'm still putting hot dogs on a shelf yeah. at a retail store. Like, yay! We are real heroes. Yeah, <laughs> we're 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 necessary, Wendy. <laughs> I know that's. Dude, I mean, again, and if you're a cop and you're listening, I'm fully joking, but trying to get drugs, which drugs are bad, um, I was like, you know, took a break. I took a year off drinking and drugs, and that was great. And then the pandemic hit, and I think, like, I was, like, working out all the time. And then I'm just, like, I got eclairs the other day. I'm like, the fuck do I care? I got mini frozen eclairs. Because so the thing that there's a curfew. So the pandemic hits, and I think the protests are good, and I think it's good to have people paying attention, like, how racist the system is, and, like, let's get these cops. And my parents are retired cops. Um, But the cops are, like, a little bit out of control right now. Yeah, I I don't feel like... Right? I don't feel like anyone should have to fight for equal rights in 2020. Like, how are we still having that fight? Like, nobody should be murdered for the color of their skin. Yeah, and then now it's turning into where it's so obvious that it's a fucking class issue because the cops are just, like... They're just making shit up. It's like what they, they're just like, it's like, it truly is like the, like with the Jim Crow laws, that's when loitering became a crime, which is just fucking wild. If you like to learn, and that's what they're doing now. They're like, you guys, everybody go to sleep. And we're like, no, they're like, stop looting. And we're like, we're not looting. We're just out. And they're like, uh, eight o'clock curfew. Yeah. Here's what's fucking wild. They put out a curfew. And I was like, this is so dumb. I'm going to get, they're like, well, this is for, this is for the looters. It's like, okay. Oh, you think the people that are smashing Macy's with baseball bats and the people that are lighting cop cars on fire, you think a curfew, they're going to be like, you guys, I know yesterday we were taking shits on cop cars, but they said we have to be in our house by eight. Yeah, so, you, gotta, you gotta be in bed, guys. God, come so, on, come on. We're not going to light that cop car or shit anywhere. The only, yeah, the only cucks that are going to, you know, people that are going to go home are fucking cuck assholes like me that are afraid anyway. It's like, yeah. I'm not... And they suspended habeas corpus. Anyway, when they did that, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try to get drugs and yeah. uh, get What else are you going to do? And what I else are you going to not... do? You, you, you're inside. You got nothing else to do. Just do the drugs. They're, they're, they're out there. Just like get high. Well, I feel like the cocaine would counteract the eclairs because, Ooh. you know, what I mean? think about it. If yeah. cocaine is, right, your heart rate goes up. You're like out of breath. It's, yeah. It's not not cardio, you know. Um, I I have a Fitbit on, and I now that I don't go to the gym, I still go for runs. Does the Fitbit count if you're just like fidgeting your knee? Like, does that count steps if you're just like shaking your knee? It yeah, if you're shaking your knee, if you're biting your nails, it counts. But dude, I just had a sugar free Red Bull the other day, just a sugar like sugar free Red Bull, smoking a cigarette in my apartment, like a fucking cool bitch. Um, and I'm smoking. I'm just such a cat lady. I'm like, I would kill myself except for I have this cat. <laughs> right. It was just my cat, this cat and do? delicious Virginia Slim. Mm. Like, what a fucking sad. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was having like a sugar free Red Bull, smoking a cigarette, and I looked at my heart rate, and it was like fucking 126. I was yeah. like, oh, this is it's like I'm on the elliptical. This is, this is, <laughs> it's a so workout in cardio, itself. Essentially. <laughs> yeah. I can't sleep, but I don't need to. I'm burning yeah, all those calories. Sleep. Yeah, no, you don't. You're not even getting tired. Yeah, You're not going the, to work. No, there's, but uh, yeah, exactly. What the fuck do I have to do? I mean, what I would get to make a video for YouTube, which I I've been try, I've been actually like working on like doing stuff, which is good. Slim Slim That's showed me doing. last night. He watched. Uh, so I got I got cuisine. super drunk last night, Wendy, while uh, prepping for yeah. all the guests, and while drunk, I watched your. Uh, your video, the most recent one you posted like two months ago, that was your quarantine cuisine. And I was like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. Like, I loved every bit of it. I loved you just constantly changing like the camera angle and just everything you were saying in the video. It was amazing. And I, I, I sent it to Rob. I was yeah. like, dude, you got to check this I out. I loved it. And you were like, I'm not wasting my makeup on this video. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll save that for, for another time. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, see, I was, like, motivated because the mania of, like, quarantine. I was like, this is dope, but like, cool. And then as it set in, like, settled into, like, this is what was happening, I was like, oh, this is. And that apartment, well, inside information, um, that apartment where I shot that, so the guy that I'm seeing, he had to go back to London to, right before the travel ban hit, but he had this fucking nice apartment that was paid for through the rest of March. Ooh. 
So I was in this super nice apartment, so I was like, oh, they all set up like I can... Now, my apartment now, which the videos that I shot are from what looks like a fucking depression tenement meth lab because my cat has ripped out the blinds from all, <laughs> two of my windows. And Slim's I mean, I, it's, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. But so I, my apartment, I'm like, I'm in a little studio apartment. I'm like, this is a, these, like, these videos are depressing. And so I've had to really amp up and find a way to make it funny and not where halfway through filming, I just start crying and drinking. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, <laughs> It's, well, I mean, it's, things become funny, but it just sometimes takes time to process it. You know, because yeah. like, I'm not like doing puns. I'm I'm mostly just like well, I have to go start selling pictures of my pussy for money. You know, to afford rent, <laughs> which is I like to also offer that fucking service. I was gonna say, <laughs> so Slim Slim will be buying Slim Slim's yeah, got yeah, my credit card right here. Slim's Wendy. got it <laughs> out right now, Wendy. And I don't know what he's got out, but he's got something out right now. But it has been a blast, Wendy. We have to wrap this up, but I can't believe how fast the time's gone. And thank you so much for talking thank to you. us, dude. Thank you guys for having me. This was really fun. This is like, uh, and thank you for watching the movie. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you doing it. I really do. I feel like. Uh, you know, I've always said over the years, the best comedians have a lot of dark shit in their lives, and you definitely do. You definitely do, and you are one of the best that I've seen. Oh, thanks, dude. Thank you. I'm going to get more shit up and not be depressed. Um, so, yeah. Where can everybody find you? Plug all my shit out. Yeah, plug Um, it all. Follow me, well, Instagram, um, is at WendyBird82, it's Wendy with an I, and on Twitter, Wendy Starling, I don't really post a lot on Twitter. Mostly I'm just like fucking petrified with fear trying to process everything that's happening in the world. Um, but YouTube, I'm going to start putting stuff up there. Just put, go to my Instagram. I have things there. and I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing with my life. It's like, well, if I'm not going to kill myself, I need to post clips on the Internet. And uh, I'm doing Zoom shows and... And sell, and truly selling pictures of my pussy and or underwear. I used to sell panties before I was a sugar baby. I know you can sell like, those. I know you can sell the and socks. I know. Socks, I know yeah, there's a socks. big uh, market for our old intern. His socks. Uh, his father used to sell Ooh. old socks. <laughs> I, I know you can even sell them on eBay. Worn socks. People love yeah. those. And fucking tights because it's feet on the bottom, pussy up top, oh, and you then got the it all. meet together around the kneecap. It's really a bargain. Um, yes. anyway, and the dirtier the better, Instagram right? For shows. Or panties. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, you are amazing. Definitely don't kill yourself. Definitely protect that cat. Yeah, yeah, I will. That's the only thing. I, uh, yeah, that's that's my guy. <laughs> he needs you. He needs you alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. You're, you're amazing. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Absolutely. You, do. Take you care. too. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.